Shelly, thanks so much for joining us here in our studio. We're not endorsing your product, but we're certainly intrigued by it. And so we invited you here to tell us a little bit more about it first. Um, very intriguing that you're an old advertising guy. So your story about how you got into cell phone radiation and, and understanding it and being interested in it is, is fascinating itself. Tell us about that. Well, I was watching ABC 2020 in the fall of 1999, and they did a 20-minute segment on cell phone dangers. Mm -hmm. And they showed tests from Europe that indicated the potential health risk, and it just intrigued me. I didn't even own a cell phone. Health risks associated with, with cell phone the, use. With cell phone use, exactly. Right, right. So I went online, and I started researching studies, and they were positive, negative, and conclusive. And then I found products that claimed to block radiation. I had companies send them to me, and they were all phony shields and chips that did nothing. They had no valid testing. And how did you know that? You sent them off to labs yourself? Well, I had them. I looked at all their studies. They had nothing. It was just, they were just phony stickers to go on the phones. Okay. By pure chance, I found material that was developed to protect workers in radioactive environments for their clothing. So I had them send me a large piece, and I tested it through a universal testing method, and the material blocked 99% of the radiation from penetrating the material. Hmm. So in January of 2000, I created the Wave Shield. And I sent it to a U.S. government-listed lab to check to test on phones, and we got great results. This is the wave shield here. How? Do, let's open one, and, and maybe, or you have well, it on your phone. Yes, I have it on the phone. Okay. Basically, we're not blocking all the radiation off the phone. We're only blocking the radiation that goes into your ear through the slit or circle that you listen through. So you're actually saying that the piece of material, there's a piece this of mesh, almost a mesh or material that goes over the slit, the slit that, that goes into your ear. That you listen through, right? Okay. Because the ear is the highest absorption rate of radiation in the body, and this is where most reports of tumors and health problems are, directly behind the ear. So our focus in testing at the government-listed lab showed that our wave shield blocked up to 97% of the radiation going into your ear without affecting reception. This little piece of mesh right here. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Then I discovered that cordless phones are equal or worse than cell phones. Okay. So I made a larger one. It's the size of a quarter because the listening area is bigger. Mm -hmm. And it was sent to the lab, and it blocked up to 97%. Now, most people remember when you had a cordless phone, if you went outside, you lost the call. Mm -hmm. Now you can be two, three blocks from the base. You don't lose the call. So we've gone from 200 megahertz of radio wave to 900 megahertz of microwave, 5.8 gigs of power. You sell these in doctor's offices. You've also sold some of them in Europe. You said that the Europeans were interested in this, the mesh that you have here on your phone is kind of a silver mesh, and they were interested in a gold. They like gold. So <laughs> what I did was I, I covered it with 24 karat gold, okay. sent it to the lab. It blocked 2% higher up than 99%. So, so that one is... That's is, the gold is slim, the, right. Same thing. Same so technology. Same product, same okay. product everything. And we have testing from U.S. government listed lab, from Germany, the Russian Health Department. I have testimonials from doctors, users. We have editorials from major newspapers endorsing the wave shield. Once again, it does not, it does not protect you from all radiation no. coming into the phone. No. That would interrupt the signal, correct? Right. If I covered the whole phone with my material, you could not make or receive a call. Okay. So it's just over the slit, once again, right. that, that goes into your ear. Because that's where the reports of tumors and health problems are, right behind the ear. And I get several reports of tumors a week now. Okay. You have a website. Very quickly, can you tell me about your website? Well, we have two websites. We have thewaveshield.com, and then about six years ago, because there was lack of information in the USA, I created a new website called the Cell Phone Radiation News Bureau, cprnews.com, and if you click on World News, I have posted over 170 studies from around the world on cell phone dangers but only two are from the U.S. So you've compiled data from around the world that around you feel world. is applicable to this study. It's all been done by scientists, by, you know, by, by people in the medical field, et cetera, by governments. We should point out, and you said it's important to note that there are no absolute studies or proof that cell phones are linked to cancer. You know, no absolute proof that, that indicates that at this point. There's no absolute proof, but there's just more and more evidence coming out. Mm -hmm. There's just more and more studies indicating the potential health risk. And as I say, I get reports of tumors and other health problems. And uh, there was just two studies just came out in Europe, one in the England, another one. They have spent over $15 million on cell phone safety research. And the French government two years ago banned all advertising to children. And several countries in Europe have age limits, like under 14, you can't use a cell phone. So you set up your website. Tell us the name of the website once again. CPRnews.com. Shelley, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.